Hi, it's Ken here, and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will show you the road trip to Exmoor National Park and North Devon area in England. This was a trip back in March 2022. Let's go! The first attraction was the Tar Steps. It's a very old bridge stretching across the river Bow like an enormous centipede. There's a very interesting story regarding the bridge. Local myth was that the bridge was built by the devil so that he could sunbathe on the giant slabs there. The devil forbade any locals to cross the bridge with death as punishment. The locals decided to check if his threat was real by sending a cat across the bridge. The cat allegedly vaporized in a puff of smoke. The locals turned to their parson to tackle the devil head on. The parson crossed the bridge and confronted the devil. The devil tried to intimidate the parson, but the parson stood his ground. Impressed, the devil allowed the locals to cross the bridge freely from that point on. Here are some very clever tourists trying to cross the river by car. Next, let's walk up Dunkery Hill on Exmoor's rolling moorland to the summit Dunkery Beacon. This is the highest point of Somerset. The hike itself was not really that difficult, but at the time I just had COVID and as a result it took a lot longer to reach the top. At the summit, it was super windy, but the view was marvellous. After Dunkery Beacon, it's time to have lunch, and afterwards, it's time to drive to Pollock Weir. The main point of interest in Pollock Weir is its little harbour. This area has the second largest tidal range in the world. When the tide is low, the harbour is completely dry and very muddy. As you can see, we have somehow got here when it was low tide. After crossing the bridge, you will see Pollock Beach, a vast expanse of grey rounded rocks. This area is actually very difficult to drive to. There were some really steep slopes to get to this area as well as leaving, not to mention there were very narrow roads. I would say in hindsight, it's probably not worth the effort visiting this area. Afterwards, it's a very long drive to Hartsland Key. With its spectacular cliffs and amazing rock formations, Hartsland Key is a perfect place to watch the sunset. The sunset at Heartland Key was so beautiful that the next morning we decided to go back there to see in bright daylight. Although the name Heartland Key suggests a harbour around, Heartland Key actually offers no such shelter for passing boats. The Heartland Peninsula is Devon's answer to Land's End in Cornwall and the coastline here is every bit as dramatic as its Cornish counterpart, if not even more so. The cliff top, just adjacent to the car park, provides fantastic vantage points to the headlands receding into the distance towards Cornwall. The nearest headland is this one, Screeder Point. It's very dramatic. This area experiences some of the roughest seas in winter, although on a sunny calm day like this, it may not feel that way. Overall, this is such an unspoiled beautiful place, it's easy to come here to get away from it all. The final attraction of this trip was a village called Coverley. What's interesting about this village is that it actually charges you an admission to visit it. After paying your admission, you get into the indoor visitor centre with a theatre and gift shop. Here's the donkey stable. For centuries, without cars, donkeys and sledges were the main form of transport in Coverley. This is Mount Fesson, a nice spot with a war memorial and spectacular views. Continuing the walk down slope, eventually you reach the town. If you search for a photo of Coverley on the internet, you will find photos with this view. There are lots of cute houses like this half-timber house. 
Because of its steep cobble street, which are just too steep for cars, the village has therefore retained an old world charm. There are many things to see in Coverley, for example this chapel. There is also this fisherman's cottage, where you can see how a fisherman lived in the 1930s. There is also Kingsley Museum, which is all about Charles Kingsley. He was famous for writing Westward Hall, which was set in and around this village. Before that, this region of the West Country was still remote and unknown to the outside world. After the publication of his novel, visitors began to come for holidays in North Devon. Finally, we got down to the harbour. From the harbour, if you walk out to the quay, you get an amazing vantage point to see the whole village. Try to time your visits during high tide, because the boats look prettier bobbling around in the water. And this concludes our visit to Coverley and the whole North Devon trip. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. See you next time. Bye.